section 1.9 is on power functions and their graphs. A power function is of the form f of x equals x to the n, where n is a whole number or positive integer. And in this case, n is the degree of the power function. First, we want to take a look at what some graphs of power functions look like for positive integers. Uh, so if you grab a calculator, you can graph a couple functions like f of x equals x squared. You may already know what that shape looks like. And then you can graph a few other power functions where they're going to have just different integers. So how about x cubed? And if you use your calculator, you can get a sketch for this graph. It looks approximately like this. And f of x equals x to the fourth. I encourage you to try this on your calculator to see what they look like. In particular, on your calculator, you might note a difference between the two functions that I graphed here for x squared and x to the fourth. They are very similar, but you may notice that the x to the fourth graph is a little bit wider near the origin, but the shapes are going to be in general the same. And then if I look at just one or two more here, if we look at the graph of x to the fifth and use the calculator on that, you're going to see that the shape is very similar to that of x to the fifth, but it might be a little wider there around the origin again. Okay. So if we did this in class, you probably would have a chance to explore those shapes. Now, on the next page, we are looking at some transformations of graphs. We already saw these transformations when we did quadratics. And so we're going to look at the specific transformation for the power function. We're looking at that A transformation first. So in a power function, this would look like, there we go. This would look like f of x equals A times x to the n. And we mentioned when we did quadratics that the A was the narrowing or the widening of the graph. So we're going to have two cases here. We're going to have if A is greater than 1, our graph is going to look narrower. And if A is between 0 and 1, our graph is going to appear wider. So A's effect will depend on how large the A value is. Then the next transformation is the negative coefficient. So in terms of the power function, this would be negative x to the n. And just like with quadratics, that's going to be a reflection across the uh, x-axis okay. changes the y values to negative so it flips them from the top down to the bottom reflection across the x-axis then we have our h and k shifts and if you remember from quadratics when i had plus h versus minus h what was the difference on that it was a left right so in terms of the power function it would look like it's an inside shift so it's going to be x plus h uh, to the nth power, or if it's a minus shift, it'd be the x minus h to the nth power. Now, if you remember from our quadratics, the plus h was a left shift, and the minus h was a right shift. So those are kind of opposite of what we would expect necessarily in the inside right there. When we see that plus, we think right, perhaps, but it really does mean left. Oops. Then when we get back to our k's, they are what we would expect for our up down shifts, plus k is up, down k uh, is the negative. And so these ones are after the end, so we have our x to the n plus k, and we have our x to the n minus k. Plus k is our up k units, and minus k is our down k units. So just kind of uh, grouping these together, those two are both horizontal shifts, the bottom two are both vertical shifts, and then the top two are both coefficients, but there's a difference between if the coefficient is numeric versus if it's a sign negative. You can have a combination of those two things, a negative number is going to do both of those two things. All right, so those are the same basic transformations as we saw with the quadratics, nothing different about those, we're just gonna see how those apply to our power functions. Okay, first of all, we're looking at a power function, negative 2 times x to the 5th. I already know what x to the 5th looks like. Then I have a reflection. So down here in the basic shape, I already know that the basic shape for x to the 5th 
again, if we saw on that previous page, we might not have made the connection yet, but we saw that we had one basic shape for the even degrees and another basic shape for the odd degrees. So we're gonna use that basic shape. The evens were that more parabolic type shape and the odds were more of that uh, all increasing shape where they're switching through the origin like that. Okay, and again, even, what I'm talking about for even right there is those powers, two and four. And odd, we're talking about those powers, three and five. All right, so on the next page, where we see that first box, that transformation box saying basic shape, I know that the basic shape with an odd power means that it's going to be all increasing, switch to the origin like this. But I do have two transformations. The transformations from the negative are reflected. And from the two, it's going to be narrow. So now what I'm expecting is that this shape is going to look more like this. It's been reflected across the x-axis. This tail that was down is now up and vice versa. And I've also kind of made it a little narrower as I drew it. Uh, we're going to sketch that a little more precisely here in a moment, but first we can do our domain and our range. This is a polynomial, and for any polynomial, negative infinity to infinity is going to be our domain. We can see that we're going to stretch across all the x's, both negative and positive. Range, um, any of the odd ones goes all the way up and all the way down for y, so the range for any odd is also going to be negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so we always, for polynomials get negative infinity to infinity for the domain, and always for any odd, we get negative infinity to infinity for the range because they'll be going up and down without bound. Not true of the evens, but is true of the odds. Okay. Now, uh, to actually get into the graph, we'll make a few ordered pairs right here. I don't have any left, right, up, down shifts, so my first ordered pair can be zero, zero, and if you plug in zero for x, you see that you do get zero. And then I can plug in one, and negative one. If I plug in one, one to the fifth is one, times negative two is negative two. And when I plug in negative one, negative one to the fifth is negative one, times negative two, we'll make that a positive two. So I'm gonna have one, negative two, and then negative one, positive two. I'm going to run out of points real fast, see what happens if I try plugging in two. Two to the fifth power is 32, times negative two is negative 64. So super, super, a low, but what that tells me is that I have to make my graph so narrow here that it doesn't go through, even really get close to that line where x is equal to 2 or negative 2 because it can't touch that line until you're down at negative 64. So it's a very, very steep graph. Having a couple ordered pairs helps me make sure I get the steepness correct. All right, let's do the same thing in the next one. We're going to use transformations and we're going to graph this. Right, this is also odd. I can see that that power right there is three, so I have odd, which means that my basic shape is going to look like this, but I have some transformations. There's just one transformation on this one. It's that K value plus five, so the transformation is up five. So just a quick sketch over here. If I shift this up five, now my graph should have that shape, the same shape right here, but just pushed up five. And the domain and range are freebies because you have an odd power function. You're going to have tails up, tails down, both directions. So you're going to get negative infinity to infinity for both of those. Let's go back and get a few ordered pairs. And then we can have our graph. Okay. So 0, up 5, shifts this up 5. So 0, 5. And then we'll plug in 1 and negative 1. So when I plug in 1, 1 plus 5 is 6. Negative 1 to the third third is still negative one plus five is four. There is symmetry there as you noticed you either um, change from that five value by the same amount so we went up one and down one. Over here we change from that zero value by going down two or up two so again there is some symmetry there. Okay so at one we're at six and at negative one we're at four. We can try one more. If I plug in two, two cubed is eight and then eight plus five is 13. It doesn't really fit. You could kind of dot out where it might be. Uh, negative two I think will fit though because I've got more room down here. Negative two to the fifth is negative eight. Negative eight plus five is negative three. 
and so I can graph that one in. And again, we'll make our graph narrow. You may try, oops, a little squiggly there, but you may want to try plugging in uh, negative three. I don't think it's going to fit on the graph. So we're gonna make sure we're narrow enough not to go through it. Okay. Now, uh, just noting the fact that this is looks pretty narrow. It's not narrow for a cubic function. It's just because it's a cubic function that it se does seem narrow. Notice that the fifth degree function is even narrower than the cubic. Okay. Higher order power will always be narrower. Right, and our last page. Two more functions we want to graph by transformations. These two both have even degree. So this one is degree four. So since it's even, I'm expecting the basic shape to be more of that parabolic type, but there are some transformations. This one has two transformations. First is going to be reflected. And then that minus three on the inside, inner is opposite. So it's going to be right three. So if I took this graph, moved it right three, put three right there, and then reflected it, that's the shape I would expect to see. So we're hoping that our final answer is going to look like this. Now domain and range. The domain for any polynomial function, power functions included, is negative infinity to infinity. You can plug any x value in. But the range depends. The range is going to go down all the way in this picture. We can figure out what's going to happen the range. It goes down all the way, but it definitely has a upper limit, a cutoff value right here. So we're going to go down to negative infinity, up to zero is that y value, include it. Uh, if there was an up down shift, I would have that reflected here by, or have that um, accounted for here, but there's no up down shift, so I'm going to stay at zero. Let's plug in a few ordered pairs and get our graph. Oops, x, f of x, and zero. I actually, before I, I shouldn't actually choose zero first, I need to look at this. I get a right three shift, which means three should be the first x value I choose. Okay, so three uh, into my function, three minus three is zero. Zero times negative one is still zero. So three, zero. If I have a left or right shift, I wanna start there. Okay, so uh, the next point, I'm gonna choose around there. I have uh, two and four. So if I choose two or four, just a second. Go get yourself a drink then, Jillian. I'm almost done with this video. Give me a moment. When I plug in four, let's plug in four. Four minus one, or four minus three, I meant to say, is one to the fourth power is one times negative one is negative one. The same is true for two. Two minus three is negative one to the fourth power is positive one times negative one is negative one. The symmetry should work on the even so that you have the exact same value for the values that are one space away on either side. So I'm at negative one, negative one. I need to go at least one more point just to find out uh, how narrow this needs to be. So let's just plug in five. Five minus three is two to the fourth power is 16 times negative one is negative 16. It's not gonna fit, but it just helps me make sure that my graph is narrow enough oops, that I don't go through uh, that negative two line until I was down at a value of negative 16. So this graph is really narrow, mostly because of the fourth power. Okay, so that's what this should look like. Okay, and the other one, basic shape, also even, which means that it's gonna have that parabolic type shape. And so it has two transformations, inner value of four, opposite of the plus, so it's left four, and then outer value of negative two, so that's gonna be down two. Okay, so this would take that vertex from the middle over left four, down two, and then I'm expecting a shape like this. All right, domain, always negative infinity to infinity. Range depends on your highest and lowest values. Okay, this went down two, so it has a lowest value at negative two. So I expect the range to be from negative two up to positive infinity. Those tails are going up, so infinity is the largest value. That downshift gave me a negative two as the smallest. Then we'll do some ordered pairs just to get things in the right places. Uh, left four, so negative four is gonna be the first one. Plug in negative four, you get zero minus two is negative two. We already moved over four and down two, so we expect negative four, two to be our first ordered pair, just from the transformations. 
um, and then either side of that, so we're gonna plug in negative five and negative three. If you plug in negative three, negative three plus four is one to the six is one, minus two is negative one on both of those. Again, symmetry, if you plug in negative five, it's negative one to the six is positive, minus two is negative one. So you spec that symmetry there on either side of your vertex. If I try plugging in one more value, say negative two, negative two plus four is, ne is positive two to the sixth is 64, minus two is 62. Again, way too high to graph. So this is going to be very, very, very narrow. Now, this graph um, didn't have a narrowing coefficient. It is narrower than the one down here because of the sixth power. The higher the power, the narrower it's going to be regardless of any coefficient.